So, hi everyone. Thank you very much for watching or listening. Liam Hartry here today with another episode of Presenting Champions. And today I'm truly honored and truly blessed to be joined by MMA legend Bubba Jenkins, who many people will know for PFL. But as well as PFL, obviously, he is a two-time champion um, with Brave as well. Um, he's won multiple uh, medals in wrestling. This man has been around the track for some of the best of the best. He's accomplished a lot in his career already, but there's a lot more to come as well. Those are a few highlights there, but we'll be talking about some more. Also, as always with my interviews, not just about sports today, but we'll also be talking about the mindset that it takes to become great in anything you want to do in life, but especially in mixed martial arts, one of the toughest sports in the world. So, uh, Champ, hopefully I haven't missed anything there, but thank you so much for coming on the show, and it's, it's a real pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. No problem, man. Thank you for having me, and a uh, great introduction. I don't think you missed anything, just an uh, all-out bad man. That's, that's who I am. <laughs> Absolutely. That's who you are, 110%. So, uh, that's good to hear it. So, starting at the beginning, uh, obviously 2022, um, it's been a, a good year for you, you know, I mean, you've had some, uh, some great fights some great wins. Um, you know, you've been doing very well. Obviously, I know the last one, um, you know, must have been a little bit tougher, but talk to us about the highlights of the year uh, from your point of view. Now, I know this is not a question about, um, about one fight specifically, but just, you know, your favorite moments of 2022, what they've been and what your thoughts are on that, basically. Yeah, no, I had a great 2022. Um... Some of my highlights are, you know, getting my suplexes off some of this year and, uh, you know, just showing the world, you know, my much improved uh, striking ability and my, my well-roundedness, you know, you know, not just a wrestler that's, you know, just coming to wrestle the whole time, you know, um, you know, looking to stand up and mix it up, you know, mixed martial arts. I'm looking to, to definitely evolve into one of the best that can, can, can uh, re well make well rounded and i think i did that this year and showing a lot of that showing a lot of toughness um you know that last fight you know we just went toe to toe and we just you know fought it out i felt the judge could have gave me a little bit of i mean the, the ref could have gave me a moment or two to to just to just stand but um nonetheless man i think this year was a great year and um, I think it gets me one step closer, as each year does. I think it gets me one step closer to to finally capture it, capturing that that long awaited belt. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, another thing to look back on, just real quick before we look forward and we get into some other things, you fought in different locations as well this year. I mean, I know you have anyway, but you know we've got like New York, and we've got you know you obviously came over to London and, and all these different things. Do you have um, a favorite place that, that fighting has taken you either this year or, or any year in your career? You know, going around the world is something people don't talk about as much as the fights themselves. You know what I mean? Well, I would love to fight in Virginia. I haven't fought in Virginia East Coast. But that's where I'm from. That's my hometown, um, Virginia Beach. I would love to fight somewhere out there, a military base or something awesome like that to get my to get my hometown back involved with, with my career. But um uh, I fought in Bahrain, and and well, I, it, I, my organization, like you said, with Brave was in Bahrain, but the uh, fighting was over there in Dubai and in different places like that. So I, I enjoyed my time in the Middle East just because it's a different culture, it's a it's a different area, it's a different lifestyle. So you know, just going out there and seeing how they roll was really really awesome, and it's probably one of my favorite places to visit. Absolutely. I just like to touch on that because people overlook that. And it's, um, you know, it's very cool to hear your stories, but it's inspiring for um, up and coming athletes as well who are just starting out that, you know, this game can take you all around the world. So you mentioned the long awaited belt. You mentioned the future a little bit um, and everything like that. You've achieved a lot, but you're still hungry. Talk to us about um, your future plans, your future dreams, goals, you know, what you're aiming for and how you keep that fire inside of you so um, so well lit, you know, despite everything you've achieved, if you get where I'm coming from with this one, you know? I think it's the chip on my shoulder, you know. Um, even though I've achieved those things, you know, or, or achieved some things in my career or in my, in my, in my combat life, combat career, um, people have, you know, 
always doubted me up until the point that I got it done. You know what I mean? So it still keeps that chip on my shoulder and it's still, there's still some critics, whether they're in my head or whether they're public or whether they're, you know, through other people's fans or the guys that I'm about to fight their their fans bring stuff up regardless of what it is. Um, it, it's a place of them saying, no, you can't get it done. And when I finally get it done, it's like, okay, well, well what else can you do? What else can, what's next? You know, what, you know, I bet you can't do this. And anytime that I've ever heard, you know, you can't, I've always tried and I've always, you know, put my heart out to, to do such a thing. And, you know, there've been a lot of people that have doubted me along the way. And I've just continued to, to knock those, those goals and those things on my list off. And that's, what's been helping me continue to just keep that fire lit. You know, I don't really focus on, you know, too much of the naysayers. It, 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 it drives me it, it allows you know there I, I allow myself to have that space of hearing the negative things just for I just so I can put it in that that tank of fuel of motivation and inspiration um, but for the most part you know my children think I'm 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 Superman so you know it's Superman Batman and then Batman so you know I'm I'm happy with that Absolutely, absolutely. That's an amazing insight into uh, into your mindset. And would you say that that same process is what's kept you going for all of these years? Because where I'm going with this, you know, elite athletes like yourself, world champions, you have to keep performing at the highest level um, year after year. Obviously, you've done that yourself. And people talk about the fights themselves, and we will get to uh, some key fights in, in a minute, by the way, as well. But would you say that same process of using the naysayers for a little bit of fuel, is that what's kept you motivated for you know year after year to keep performing at the highest level? Yeah, you got to mix it with a little bit of the negativity and also the positives. You know, what are you doing this for? What are you fighting for? You know, what are your goals and dreams and aspirations you know i truly want to be a blessing so that i can bless people i'm truly doing this to help you know more people like myself that have that uh fight that have that that goal that have the that 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 that, that level of intelligence that you know no matter what we do no matter what sport no matter what topic company organization no matter what it is we're going to survive and thrive in it learning it knowing it and, and teaching somebody else. And I'm, you know, I'm very much a leader in that sense where, I, you know, if I, if I learn, you know, where the goal is, I'm, you know, I'm going to leave a trail back to, you know, some less fortunate people. And that's just the type, type of person that I am. You know, I just, I'm here to fight for, you know, not only my beliefs and the things that, you know, I, I, I've been, I feel like I've been anointed to do, but also, you know, the, the, going back to each and one, teaching one, to growing people, to, you know, um, there's a Jay-Z line that says, how many billionaires come from my house? And he's like, you know, um, Beyonce, Re and Yay, that's three. And then he's like, LeBron's a billionaire boy, that's probably four. You know, it's like, that's a, that's a very powerful statement of how many people have I not only made myself successful, but how many people can I continue to to show how to, to come to success as well so it's a little bit of that uh that that new school harriet tubman warriors mentality just to go back and continue to 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 free people who are mentally distraught to free people who are financially stuck to free people who are inspirationally stuck you know to free people who are just not in where they need to be on their calling and things like that you know i'm, I'm a man who who is about substance and and there's a purpose for every reason um and the book i read the most has a, a chapter it's called ecclesiastic and it, and it talks about the season for everything under the sun there's a season there's a time to bury and there's a time to plant there's a time for for all of these things and and i believe with my growing into success i will slowly have the times to to be the blessing that i would like to become amazing answer man i mean i knew that would be a great answer to that question but the uh the, the depth of wisdom and, and sort of insight that you shared there the knowledge very powerful and i really appreciate you sharing that because you know it's, it's a big reason why i do these interviews in the first place is not just to talk about fighting but to you know take some of those lessons from great people such as yourself distill those in an easy to understand way and sort of pass them along to uh anyone who wants to achieve uh, something big in life, which 
leads me to the, the next question, but, you know, before we get to the fights, what would your advice be for certain people who do have a big dream or a big goal, whether it's in fighting, whether it's in something else, you know, they want to um, live the life of their dreams, achieve something big. I know this is a big question. I was going to ask it at the end, but we've, we've got into it now. So what would you say, like maybe two or three pieces of advice that people need to do to, uh, to succeed? And also, if you could share with us uh, the, the title of that book as well, because that would be great to, to hear about, you know? Well, that book is the Bible. That's the book I read most. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, um, that, I thought it might be, but, you know. Ecclesiastics, um, it, the book, the Bible used to be read for a sense of knowledge. Before it was read for rules, regulations, traditions, and religions, and things like that. It was read um, under the American government for a sense of knowledge and, and, and manliness and, and understanding. Um, and so, you know, before people tried to look at it as such a religious thing or, oh, I'm the, I don't believe in that or things like that, you have to look at it from a place of understanding of wisdom with all that getting, gain, and understanding. And that's something that, that that book has a lot of a lot of understanding um, on 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 thousands of different topics from thousands of different times and and from kings to to farmers to to servants to generals you just have so many different types of people who speak about different topics that you know we deal with every day in life so you know that was that's my if I, if I could ad advise one book but um, no, back to your question. Uh, if you can rephrase that again, it was it was how do I go ahead and rephrase yeah, it? Yeah, advice like so. First of all, with the Bible, that's that's a great wisdom there because uh, absolutely such a book of knowledge and wisdom for life, regardless of um, I would say regardless of whether people believe in God or not or whatever you thought. I mean, I do personally, but whatever your views are, it's very very powerful with life knowledge, as you say. So spot on there. The other question was um, about advice you would give to people who wish to um, succeed, yeah. achieve something big, have a positive impact in the world, anything like that. Basically, you know. I would say one one never lose that fire of believing in yourself. There's going to be so many things and so many people, so many situations, so many circumstances that come against that vision of who you believe you are in the end. You know, that vision of you standing on the top of the podium, that vision of you with your hands raised and, you know, you getting the belt wrapped around your waist, that vision of you being crowned, um, the vision of, you know, someone coming up to you and giving you your championship ring, all these visions that we dream of, of ourselves later in life, you know, how the, I don't, I don't know when they, when they give you the soccer trophy, they put you all on the stadium or put you all on the um, stand and they come up and they give you your trophy and they put medals on your neck. All of those visions of championship glory and victory, um, you have to have that strong belief in yourself because there are going to be so many things that come against that vision alone, that ultimate vision of you seeing yourself in the end, just the workout, the workouts it takes to get to that vision that themselves will speak against that vision. You will have doubts in those workouts. You will have things that grow you towards that vision, but also things that mentally, if you're not strong enough, or if you're not, you know, having that belief itself, it will mentally deter you from that goal or that vision. You would think that vision is not real. You would think it's more of a dream than it actually is reality when in more, when in actual understanding of self, it's more real than actually it is dream. Um, so when you see those visions of self, when you see that understanding of yourself winning those championships more than you've seen yourself do anything else, other, you know, you fantasize it, you eventually manifest it to the point of it becoming your reality um, more so than it becoming your dream. And, 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 and people who have achieved things in life, they, they can speak to or testament to that. So I would say, one, having that strong, strong belief in yourself has got to be fundamental. Um, two, you have to stay inspired, whether it be a good coach, whether it be other fighters that you're trying to chase, um, 
peers that are really, really good or, you know, Tom Brady being the greatest in his sport, you're seeing him still continuously do it. You got to be inspired by that. You see LeBron James still scoring a high amount of numbers of points and still leading his, you got to be inspired by that. You know, Jordan Burroughs as a wrestler is still out here leading the world wrestling team, you know, to world cup championships. And he's been wrestling for as long as you got to find things and find people and find situations that inspire you you know there are people who believe in the ukraine situation and and and, and have a background and a culture in that so they they come become inspired by those people um believe in yourself find something that inspires you that's that's truly a big base you know and you got to be inspired to to wake up and train when you don't want to train when you're tired when you're hurting you know these things are fundamental to be able to lean on when you're not in the right place people think that you get into the sport and you're always going to feel great you're always going to want to train you're always going to want to work out you're always going to want to do these things that when you get to the highest levels of it have to have to find some kind of place of 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 of, of difference to make it not monotonous and um that that take that comes with inspiration and i would say three um is know your calling you know know what you're supposed to be doing god has given you a certain certain set of skills like the movie taken give you a certain set of skills that you already have built inside of you you know if you have a way with words you know if you adapt well you know if you if you punch hard and everything you punch turns to dust you know if you if you run well and you just naturally have been a better runner than everybody else you know when you and your friends jump to touch the light pole you know you jump 12 inches taller than anybody else's you know these natural physical gifts that god has given you you know these natural mental things that had that he's equipped you with um know your calling start to learn about yourself start to know who you are believe in yourself of course have that inspiration but like sun tzu says in the book know your opponent but know yourself know who you are know who you're what you're great at know why you're great at it and and start to learn your past so you can understand your future if you don't know where you come from you don't know where you're going a lot of times so um, and you got to be right within yeah you can't win if you're not right within you can have a lot of attributes you can have a lot of things going on you can have a shotgun in your hand and I can have a BB gun in my hand. And if you're mentally not right within, if you're spiritually not right within, if you're emotionally not right within, you can shoot your shotgun at the wrong time. I can wait to walk up on you and pull my BB gun out at the right time and do the damage that it needs to be done to win that fight. So um, truly you can't win if you're not right within that's, that's a, I don't even know if that's a Lauren Hill statement, but at the end of the day, Fuji's in the house. But one, have a belief in yourself. Two, have something that inspires you. Three, I forgot what three was, but you can run the tape back. And uh, four, you can't, can't win, can't win if you're not right with it. Truly, you gotta, even if you win the championships and you're not right with it, you'll lose a lot of things on the way out. You'll lose family, you'll lose relationships, you'll lose money, you'll lose finances, you'll lose mindset, you'll lose your mind, um, you'll lose the world. You might you might gain the championship, but you'll lose everything else. So um, truly, you got to be right within when, you, when it comes time to win. Wow. I mean, I'm blown away by, by the statements. There is some incredible... Um, wisdom. Once again, I know I said this just now, like five minutes ago, but I knew that would be a great answer, but that was a really like out of this world answer. So thank you so much. I love to get into the uh, the deeper side of things with these interviews as well as talking about the fighting. So thank you so much. And anyone who's watching or listening, there's some absolute gold dust in, in those statements that you can apply to any area of life. So thank you, champ. That is, that is fantastic. Um, Obviously, having some fun now talking about certain fights of yours as well. Um, you mentioned earlier about the future, about what you're aiming for, about how the best is yet to come in your career. Taking a moment to look back though, at what you have accomplished so far, do you have um, a proudest moment or um, maybe more than one moment, whether it's world title wins, whether it's a particular fight, you know? I love this because 
I never get the answer I expect from, from this question um, when I speak to different champions. So in your own words, what is your proudest moment and why, please? I would say, like, like you just said, that's wild. It's wild that most people don't give you um, the answer you, you, you hear um, or you expect. That's because I don't. I'm not gonna give an answer that is actually that is expected. My proudest moment is probably my, in my last fight. Um, it was my first time, in a sense, losing with like with no doubt in my mind that I was going to win. Right? I'm surprised that I lose other fights, but I know I know some things about myself going into the fight where it's like, okay, if I lose, this might be the reason. Um, but in that fight, um, I, I burned my boat. I did everything I possibly could do, um, to show up and be ready to become a world champion, to, to win the million dollars, to, to win the championship, to, to captivate and, you know, put a cap on, you know, what has been a really good career. Obviously it wasn't going to be my retiring moment, but up until the was going to be a moment of validating me as a true warrior and true world champion here in America and yada, yada, yada. But not getting that done, losing to Lockning and, you know, I haven't watched the fight, but I just know that, you know, being in the fight, it was a war. I was mentally challenged. I, you know, I went through a lot of things. And although, Although the fight went with my composure, the championship left with my composure, um, losing my composure, having me lost my championship, I was very proud of who I had to be in that moment to not only withstand who Brandon Lockney was, but to fight against everything else that I was going through, everything else that I was um, that I fought against. Um, to, I'm very proud of who I, after taking a shower that night, after watching the blood fall off of me and, you know, putting ice on the shin and this, that, and the third, um, sitting in my bed, having been, uh, you know, having been crown runner up, um, a finalist, not a champion, not the champion, uh, not the world champion, having been crowned a runner up. I sat there um, with pride of my preparation and mental toughness leading up to it. I think I, I became a, a, a fortified warrior and knowing, okay. I tasted defeat, but I also tasted the taste of victory. I was I was so close to to the victory that I also know exactly what that tastes like as well. So good luck after I lick my wounds and 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 find my mind again. Good luck dealing with what that fight turned me into. Yeah, I love that the the transformational aspect um, is. Is fantastic. I, I totally get where you're coming from. Um, amazing answer once again. I know I keep saying that, but I, I'm not just saying that. I mean, it really is the case, you know, because we're getting into the deeper side of things, which is amazing. Was that one of your toughest fights or was that um, because you mentioned about how it's transformed you as a person, how you've grown, uh, which is also an amazing life lesson as well for, for people listening. In terms of that, would you say that that was one of your toughest fights or are there other fights that come to mind for tough? Also, uh, just a precursor that, obviously tough comes in many forms. It's not just like who hits the hardest or who's the best wrestler or whatever. It can obviously be, like you mentioned just now, you know, going into the fight, there's things going on in your mind or going on in other areas of your life that sort of make it a tough fight in a different way. So it comes in many forms, that's all I'm saying. But what comes to mind for um, for that side of things, like the toughest fights, for whatever reason? Um, I say I would say Boshiak, Kyle Boshiak, um, was one of my toughest fights, not because of who 
Deck was, although he continued to just come forward. You know, that was the first fight this season. Um, um, it was the pressure building off of me losing to Chris Wade last year. And then, you know, having this first season, having this first fight, I was expecting uh, one opponent, then I got a different one. And it being, you know, an ex UFC guy who's just coming off a win, who fought very well against strikers and knows their wrestling and just different things that he posed, you know, my mindset going into it and the pressure leading up to it and it being the first fight of the season. Um, I, I, I would say that that fight helped me grow so much during the fight. I, I, I experienced some adversity with my eye being poked and, you know, just kind of, you know, closing on me during the fight with a lot of time still on the clock, I had to fight with one eye and I had, I had to stand up and fight. And, you know, he got away from me and my wrestling. So I had to really, you know, show the world that I could strike. And, you know, that was one of the things that I was talking about that I put on display earlier about, you know, that was, that was something that I was happy with this year that, but that was because of that fight alone that, you know, I had to show the world that I, I can sit the guys down. I have power, I have speed and, you know, I'm excited to show how I develop. And I think that was one of the fights that propelled me into being who I am or propelled me into that championship fight. It, it had some adversities. It had some growing points. It had some mental things that I had to get over, had some physical things that I had to get over. And therefore it became one of my all around toughest fights, not because of the competition itself, because it was one sided in my direction, but because of all those things I mentioned before. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that turning, turning a negative into a positive and everything is, is one small part of it, but when you've gone deeper into how that process actually works, um, I mean, you hear it thrown around a lot of all, you know, turn a negative into a positive, take from it, use it as fuel, blah, blah, blah. But you've gone like much deeper into how that actually works. So that's, that's absolutely brilliant. I have to ask you about winning the, uh, the Brave CF championship as well um because that's an incredible achievement um with your career i'd like to get into really anything that you'd like to share about it so obviously the fight itself but how it felt to become world champion i mean what goes through your mind in in a moment like that that you know most of us obviously never get to feel so it would just be great to get an insight into the whole process really the whole thing yeah, you know that was, that was one of the ones, um, you know, when you said greatest moments, I thought about that. And when you said toughest moments, I thought about that because it was, it, you know, it was like I, I just experienced the one that got away or the one that was, you know, absent to my collection. You know, I've been national champion, been world champion in wrestling and different things like that. But having captured that world championship that a lot of people expect me to have gotten, um, and having to go to Dubai to, to get it was something that was different for me, but also challenging the, the weight, the travel, and also being my first five round fights against a durable champion who whose conditioning was his you know biggest attribute, um, you know, having to. He, he was a two-time champion, so it was my first fight back in a long time against a really good fighter, four or five rounds in another country. Um, you know, it, it was challenging in all ways. You know, I had to really step up mentally and physically to, to get that. And, um, you know, the, I, I spoke to how all those other things made me the fighter that I am, but winning that first championship solidifies you as one of the best fighters in the world. Um, I don't care what anybody says of which organizations you win a world championship. If you win a world championship, you have solidified yourself as one of the best fighters in the world. Now you can start to rank yourself and other people start to rank you pound for pound and you know where you are as a champion. But in the state of Virginia, you have six state champions at the same weight class. And there's a lot of states like that that have the same weight state champion at the same weight because there's just different divisions of where your school is or you know how much money your schools gain or things like that. So people should understand that yeah that you can be called a state champion and not be the best state champion of your state but still having done a a, a great achievement and that's how i felt about this you know i know that it 
wasn't the world's championship of championships, but I know that it is a validation of, okay, you know, let's get past this five rounds. Let's beat this guy who has the belt. Um, and, and, and let's, let's, let's get stamped as one of the best fighters and, and let's start moving as that. Once you get that put on you, once you get ranked, you know, world champion, once you bring home something and, and, and be validated by many important people that say, yes, you are this, you start to walk like it, you start to talk like it, you start to think like it, you start to become that world champion um, because you do have this challenger lifestyle, this contender lifestyle. Um, until you become champion, you have only been these you know, challenging ch contenders, the, you know, you've only been this up and coming somebody. Now you're a champion and people start calling you champion. People start recognizing you as champion. And so everything you do is champion. Like your moves are world champion moves. Your punches are world champion punches. Therefore you start to validate and move in that mindset, which turns you into, like you said, those visions that, that you have later down the line of yourself. Absolutely. It's incredible to get an insight into what it's really like because, you know, from watching the fight or even, you know, being at fights live where people win world championships, that's one thing. But getting the inside track and the behind the scenes on, on what it really is, is absolutely amazing and what it represents as a bigger picture. Uh, moving into the last couple of things, really, for this, because we've we've got into some, some good uh, material so far. Um like I said to you earlier, your career, the best is yet to come. Um, I believe that, you know, you're still on the up and up with like everything you've achieved so far, um, even though obviously what we just talked about, incredible achievement nonetheless. But I just, I feel, I'm not just saying it to be polite. Like when I'm talking to you, like the vibe and like the energy I get from you of the, of the drive you still have, um, I feel that it, the best is yet to come personally. But anyway, that being aside, when you jump forward a few years, um, this question might be premature, but I'm going to ask anyway. How would you like to be remembered as a, as a fighter? I mean, we've talked so far about like you leaving the legacy of success, not just for yourself, but for inspiration for other people. And I don't always ask this question when people are still active, but like with you, I, I feel that it has some relevance because you're creating a legacy that is, um, as I mentioned, not just personal, but it, it has impact on a lot of other people as well. So if you get what I mean by this, like, you know, down the road when you've won some more titles and when you've done some more things, how do you think that people will look back on on your career personally when you've put all the naysayers finally in their, in their place and got rid of them, you know? I would say they were, they, people are going to look back at me because I don't think, you know, people of my elk or people of my time or my type of anointing or my type of presence, when I'm in a room, you can feel it. I don't have to say anything. You can hear me. You can see through the camera, the realness in me. I love face-offs because I get to stare at someone who's been saying they are something and they get to finally see that I am everything I said I was. So that's why I love face off. That's why I don't mind being, cause I'm, I'm, I'm a hundred percent real. There's nothing fake about me. So when you get to see me in person or, or, or move about me, you feel this kingly anointing and warrior like mentality that it's not just, Oh, he's got warrior ancestors. You can feel it on me that it's not what I carry. It's, it's what's in me. Um, so when I understand that and I carry that mantle, I, I move with that understanding. Um, I think most people will see me as a underrated warrior that was exciting. And, and I, I mean, the definition of a bad man, you know, some people loved them, some people hated them, some people, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'll be remembered one as, um, someone who was exciting always entertaining because that's who i am but also the warrior mentality doesn't stop you know the fact that i lost my last fight but i lost it what i feel like on on my shield i feel like i gained more fans from it than than maybe even the win would have gotten me I'm, I'm not sure but um the 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 comments that i've gotten go right in line and trajectory with who I truly am as a, as a, as a war priest, as a man who is of substance, as a father, as a fighter, as a, a man of faith, you know, these are the things that I, you know, put my, 
put my heart and sleeve and my my dying breath on and to see the world start to see me as that without me saying it it is really awesome so um i think they'll start to see me as a warrior that was underrated i believe you know i don't believe i don't know what my world ranking is but there are you know i'm sure in the world they don't have me top 10 and I know for a fact there aren't 10 people that can beat me at 145 pounds, um, especially after I'm growing and I'm learning. And, you know, I would say my first couple of years of MMA were stubborn years. Like, oh, I'm just going to wrestle my way to championships and then learning how quickly the sport evolves and it grows and it, and it, and it turns into what it has become. You're like, okay, these are the things that I need to do to become champion. So as long as I've been in the game, I still feel like I'm new and growing and I still feel like the people see me as a developing project you know a lot of fighters you see them fight and they look like the same fighter as they've always been or you'll see them fight and that's as good as they're ever going to be and i think people see me fight and they're like man he's got so much more room to grow which is an awesome thing because i've been fighting for a while but when they see how much more room or how much more potential i have i think that's what makes people exciting excited about you know my 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 future with my mindset that i have and and, and this wave that i feel like this world is feeling from me this 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 start of stardom that it's about to hit um once it hits i think everybody needs to get out the way but until then i think they'll they'll know me as a uh, uh underrated warrior absolutely. a re real warrior who's underrated yeah. <laughs> absolutely i mean for, again so many things you you covered there in one answer um the journey of continual improvement love that you know it's a journey not a destination and, and all that stuff um the 100 real thing totally i mean i get that vibe um from this talk you know even like thousands of miles away or whatever it is i still get that vibe so it's a very very strong vibe of uh, of realness totally and uh i mean man there's, there's so many things you you put in there incredible so um i will say for for the sake of time like your time my time and people's attention spans watching and listening to this, which, oh, you know, you always have to factor in that I think attention spans, they're getting, um, they're getting shorter. Um, three more things uh, before we, before we wrap this up. Okay. One of them is you have um, talked about how you've improved during your career, not just physically, but, you know, mentally and, and spiritually and emotionally and like on, on all different levels. So I just want to hone in on that a little bit more as how, um your journey through martial arts has sort of improved and grown you as a person and the reason for asking this is is through the this call we've touched on that like a bit here and a bit there and there's been some great nuggets of wisdom about that but if we actually hone in on that process now never mind like your fighting ability which is obviously improving fight by fight but like yourself as a person even outside of the cage how has martial arts improved i know this is a, this is a big question so, so i'm sorry because it, it you know no, no each um each thing that you go through in life each struggle depending on if you have a goal like if you have a goal i have a goal of being this bad man champion world beater slash hero to to the masses right if i have that dream or that goal i also have this understanding of what i need to do to get to that point from when i take myself out of um being me and i look at it from a perspective of what would i need to do to make that person better i can see how the struggles of life and the struggles of things you go through while you're trying to become that person i can see how those things build that character and they 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 grow you in areas that you need to grow with uh, i that's a self-animalization and a self-reflection that i can have that I take myself out of the journey. I take myself out of who I am. I don't look at it from the perspective of, I look at it from, a you know, a, I say Bubba or we, or I look at it from third person's perspective because I'll take myself out of the moment and I'll look at, okay, what did that struggle? Why did that happen? What did it do? Where is it 
you know, where is it supposed to be a positive? Because God doesn't waste pain. There's nothing about anything that we've ever been through in life that is wasted. So what was that for? And how does that get me to that ending journey, those ending visions? And when I see that struggle or I see those things or I see the things that have happened to me in this walk of combat, I know that it is to one day prepare me for championship help. Absolutely. Love it. Again, um, life lesson that's transferable to whatever people are doing, whether it's uh, fighting or something else. But again, it's amazing because what I try and do with these interviews is I do try and get into the deeper side of things as well, because there's so much that I mean, there's a lot of great interviews out there where people talk about cutting weight and training and, you know, road work and whatever it is. And, and they talk about that technically and they talk about that technically deeper than I do, you know. But I try and get into like the minds and, and, and hearts of great people such as yourself um, as to what got you where you um, where you are today. And today we've we've done that. And then some. So I said uh, three more things. So that's one. The last two. Curious to get into like how you um, deal with fame and recognition and things outside of the cage because it's important to give a mention to 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 the fans at the end of the day um because the sport would be nothing without them so i'm just curious as to your thoughts on like when you get stopped and, and ask for pictures and all that type of stuff what does it mean to you i mean i've said how you deal with it i don't mean that in, in a negative way but just like what your thoughts are on what it means no i love it i love it i 100 love it um it comes with the territory. Um, it makes me feel great sometimes. It makes me feel like a superstar, especially if you're with someone you're trying to impress and then someone comes up and is like, oh, you know, can I have your autograph? And you're like, oh, look, look, look at this moment. Oh, give me one second. You know, and you get that moment of, you know, autographing or taking a picture. And I, I'm not, I've not been one for autographs and, and pictures um, when I met famous people coming up in my, when I was younger, I wasn't one to, Oh, let me get a picture with that person or something. That wasn't my generation. I think it's a different time um, and generation, but um, when it, when I see the look on their face or the understanding of what I've done for them, you know, I, I come from the wrestling background of a blue collar understanding. So blue collar wrestlers, you know, I've come up in the wrestling world where you've heard of these great wrestlers. You go to a tournament and you see these great wrestlers, you see, the, you see them do amazing things. And when they walk by you, you're like, Oh my gosh, you know, whether they're four foot seven or five foot three, you still feel like they're these godlike, you know, images or, or people because of of who they are but i i've had those moments of uh, oh man that's that person that's that person that's this person or that's that person and then seeing people run up to them or get their autographs and then leave and seeing the type of energy that comes with that you know five kids run off with a bubba jenkins autograph that's 10 kids now that know about it that's 20 kids that now heard of bubba jenkins that's 40 kids that are now wanting to know what's up with bubba jenkins i mean just on on the smallest little things you can inspire people i've been a big person of of the inspiration so when you come up to me and you want to autograph or you want a picture i'm very down to earth you know i don't know you from a hole in the wall and i was like yeah let's jump on a zoom call i'm very easy to reach um i don't see it as you know a um um, I, I see it as part of my calling. I'm supposed to be reachable. I'm supposed to be talk toable or touchable. Um, I'm supposed to, you know, my goal, well, not my goals, but my my life belongs to the calling. So when it comes to my calling of being this great fighter in combat that God is supposed to make me, that comes with also hearing people's story or, or people coming up and being a little too touchy or a little bit too grabby, or a little bit too drunk or a little bit, you, you have to have the grace and the ability to become a star because that's what that deals with. Um, I can't say that I won't ever get annoyed by it because I have seen massive celebrities get overwhelmed by those things, but I've been through so much in my life to where I've had to become overwhelmed by things. And just because of my peace that, surpasses all understanding i i didn't become overwhelmed 
Absolutely, yeah. It, again, it's it's an amazing answer. It's something that's overlooked. People take it for granted that, like, oh, you know, you're a top fighter, you're at elite level, you're a world champion, um, you you're going to get this type of attention. But at the same time, getting into how you handle that is is brilliant. And following on from that, the closing out question with this is what you would say to your fans and what you would say to your supporters. I close out with this because the sport would be nothing without them. We talked about your future at the beginning. The future is, is very, very bright. Um, we also talked about the naysayers and the people who, you know, have those, those negative things, but those people who have um, the positive things, you know, we flip that on and said, those people that support you, those people that um, pay to watch you fight or send you encouragement on social media or whatever it is, you know, it, it comes in many forms. Um, nice and simple question, I suppose, but what would you say to those individuals out there all over the world? Man, you know, it's wild. Um, I have never really, you know, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of my feelings or, or anything like that. Um, but after the fight, I got back to the hotel room and people were blowing up my phone with so many just encouraging comments because so many people know, you know, there's part of selling the fight and talking trash and having that fun. And um, everybody knows that I mean good by the things that I say. I don't ever get to that line of, oh, that was so disrespectful that, you know, Bub was over the line. I, oh, I'm, I'm such a gentleman that I will say the things that I need to say, but I would go to the lines of, no, I truly believe that. I'm, I'm sorry that, you know, you believe otherwise, that's your opinion, but I truly believe what I'm saying. And I won't, I'm not apologetic in those terms or I'm unapologetic in who I am when I believe the things about myself or when I believe the things about the things that I've seen in my opponent. With that being said, um, I try my best to, you know, always be truthful, especially in the eyes of my opponent. Um, but taking this loss really put me in a perspective of, man, I was surprised. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm disappointed, but I'm surprised and I'm definitely going to be licking my wounds. You know, I'm definitely going to be figuring out what went wrong. And as I got on social media, and of course there are going to be, you lost me money. You lost me the bed. Oh, you was talking all that trash. You was saying all this. You was saying all that. Yada, yada, yada. Shut your mouth. Next time you need to be more humble. People are always telling me as if they know me that I need to be more humble. Um, and it's like, oh, you were saying all this. It's like, of course I was saying that. What was, was I not supposed to say that? Was I not supposed to speak on, um, him saying that he that he believes he can beat me and me believing I can beat him was I not supposed to speak up on my on, on how I feel and things I so there's a lot of aftermath that come with that but the true true moment that really broke my heart of with contriteness broke my heart in a good way like you know not broken in and in, 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 in a hurt way but broken in you know just simply made me feel loved and be loved was all the comments and i jumped on live for maybe two minutes and i allowed the world to see me in tears and it wasn't like hey man i'm sad that i lost the fight it was the tears of guys truly you don't understand um what your comments are doing your comments one after the other just like tears kept coming down in my eyes as I read the comments because it was just one inspirational thing after the other. And I had never in my life received this type of love um, in that matter. I don't know. I've received love in many different ways. Congratulations. Hey, world champ. You, you, you get a lot of fans, you get a lot of love, but um, it was a weird feeling of, really being hugged by the fans, really being hugged by the people who, you know, it, it, by people who didn't even know me. They're, they just watched the fight and they're like, man, I really want to show you this guy love. You know, I had some people that I don't agree with in life that called me on FaceTime on, on opposite numbers that I didn't know. And I FaceTime and I'm looking at them I'm like, why are you calling me? I don't even like you like that. You know, and they just, Hey, I saw the fight and, you know, I just want to let you know, bro, you know, whatever beef we had or whatever, you know, I just, I, I got love for you. So there were people who were saw the fight and were inspired to call me, even though we weren't 
eye to eye, or even if we had a, a, a friction in our friendship. So to see that type of response um, really touched me. It really, really, it really touched me. So the fans, you don't know how many, how many fans have turned a fighter away from a, you know, I'm, I can't say that I was suicidal ever, but you don't know how many fans have turned a fighter away from suicide. You don't know how many fans have um, made that fighter step out and get that run in or get that extra jog in or that extra push up. Um, the fans can make or break you. And that's what, you know, that's why you really have to have a good realness about yourself because there are people who are fans of fake personalities and therefore you're going to receive fake love and fake hate. But when you are real as I am and you see a man fighting for his family, fighting for a championship, literally fighting his way out of, you know, generational curses and things like that, you see a man who is much like yourself, who just wanting better for themselves and, and, and doing it the best way they can. So um, I'm appreciative of the fans who are, who are down to earth and blue collar, such as myself, who are just out here grinding and striving for the next championship, whether it be in business or in family or in life or in actual combat and, and, and career and athletics. Absolutely. Incredible, um, incredible insight. Once again, I know I keep saying that, but again, there's so much contained within that answer. Absolutely brilliant. Um, and I always like to close out with a, a shout out to those people who make um, everything possible obviously you know you're putting the work in you're um, doing the daily grind you know no matter how uncomfortable no matter how difficult it is but with them watching with them uh, and not just watching but with them putting their emotion into it as you say it makes everything possible so amazing champ we've talked about some incredible uh, material today you know not only the fights and everything but also the deeper side of things um, I'm very, very happy. I'm very appreciative of you uh, making the time to come on here. Obviously, being such an open book, I know that's um, the type of person you are anyway, as we've obviously talked about, but I still do appreciate that um, because we've, we've gone deep with some, some uh, real cool stuff. And just the last thing for me to say is thank you for your time and thank you for, for being on here, really. All right, my man. Thank you for having me. And yeah, next time I got something going on, the next time the fight, we'll, we'll do this again. We'll be looking out for bad man coming back next year. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel and there'll be more videos coming soon.